Hi, my name is Stephanie Fromstein, and I'm one of the authors of Diagnosis and Management of Meibomian Gland Dysfunction, Optometrist's Perspective. And we wanted to write this paper because ocular surface diseases, including meibomian gland dysfunction, continues to be a leading cause for patient-driven visits to the optometrist. Meibomian gland dysfunction falls into the category of posterior blepharitis, which refers to any inflammation posterior to the gray line. This is in contrast to anterior blepharitis, which tends to involve more anterior structures, such as the base of the lashes. According to the International Workshop on Meibomian Gland Dysfunction, the condition involves either terminal duct obstruction or an alteration in the glandular secretion. So these are what we need to be looking at for clinical examination, along with changes in the tear film and any symptoms the patient may have. Since there's been an increase in the understanding and awareness of this condition, our roles as optometrists in identifying it, even in asymptomatic patients, is imperative. We're on the front lines of both the diagnosis and treatment of meibomian gland dysfunction. So how do we diagnose meibomian gland dysfunction? Diagnosis is often made on the basis of a combination of signs and symptoms. The earliest signs that we're looking for as clinicians are meibomian gland dropout, altered meibomian gland expression, and changes to the lid morphology, specifically plugging or pouting of the meibomian gland orifice. And in our article, we discuss mybography as a technique to visualize these meibomian glands in vivo in an effort to help classify the severity of the disease and response to therapy such as meibomian gland expression. We want to emphasize the importance of meibomian gland expression, not only in treating the condition, but in actually diagnosing it in the first place. Whether using digital pressure, cotton swabs, mistrata paddle, or a meibomian gland evaluator, the goal is to express the meibom to assess both the quality and the quantity. Other considerations in diagnosis are also discussed in the article and include corneal and conjunctival staining, lid wiper epitheliopathy and line of marks, Schirmer and phenol red testing, tear volume, and evaporation or mybometry. The authors also discuss other conditions which commonly exist with and can exa exacerbate meibomian gland disease, the relationship with other forms of blepharitis, aqueous deficient dry eye, demodex, and contact lens wear are discussed and should factor into your overall patient management. Finally, we discuss treatment options, including recent advancements. An important first step in initiating treatment is to stage the disease, as treatment is by stage and additive. Stage one disease therapy includes warm compresses, digital massage, along with lid hygiene for those also suffering from anterior blepharitis. From there, we move through topical agents, oral agents, dietary changes, as well as emerging technologies for the management of more advanced meibomian gland disease. One such technology is in-office gland expression, where the lids are warmed using a compress, the lid margin is debrided using a golf spot, and digital pressure, or in this case, a mistrata paddle, is used to express the contents of the meibomian gland. Overall, the authors feel that this is an important topic due to its prevalence, as well as our role as first-line defense against the condition. Increased awareness of the disease and therapy options allow us to manage our patients more effectively to decrease the long-term signs and symptoms. As new techniques and treatment options continue to emerge, practitioners will have to adjust their treatment algorithm based on the patient's needs and severity.